Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Decided to take a little bit of a break um, for the past few days. Yeah, because you know I just want to continue to relax and you know watch some movies and have a little fun. You know, before I had to start class this week, which is Tuesday. What else? A cycling class. So I can continue to lose weight, feel strong and healthy and all that. And yeah, I'm just keeping up with that. I know it's not easy. So I decided to review a movie that came out on February 26, 1999, which is going to celebrate its 20th anniversary this year. Yep, hard to believe. It's a romantic comedy, but it's also a drama too. Uh, simply called The Other Sister, a Gary Marshall film, which is a story about a mentally disabled woman who just came from a boarding school back to her house, you know, living with her rich family. And just, you know, just to find some new things in her life until she meets uh, a new man who's also mentally disabled, and together they fall in love. But a lot of difficulty is about to happen. Yeah. And this was uh, criminally overlooked when it came out um, mostly because and sad to say as I'm explaining this it got negative reviews from critics around including Roger Ebert yeah because his review was totally scattering incredibly distasteful and offensive too if you think about it yeah we read his review it was very unsatisfying and I'm sorry but I totally disagree with him I totally agree with I totally disagree with everyone, sadly, because there's only a few uh, reviewers out there that says a must-see film from NBC, and then, and on the back, you know, it has the right quotes, you'll fall in love with the other sister, and got four stars, which I would agree. Yeah, I guess, you know, people were expecting, I don't know, another Rain Man or something, you know, because they had to deal with people with uh, mental disabilities like autism because yeah, you know I have autism too and I can see how everyone feels you know through those symptoms but this was a good movie it was a feel-good film there was nothing wrong with it in fact I thought the performances were very good especially Juliette Lewis was sad to say she got nominated for a Ratsy, which she doesn't deserve. Oscar, yes, but not Ratsy. I mean, geez, I mean, why does this have to be an easy target for her? Yeah, it's no surprising, though, too, because she's done way worse films than this. And I thought Gino Vanni Ravisi was very good, too. This is also his still performance as opposed to all the other actors involved yeah so I'm, I'm fine with that and I, I can understand you know there are issues with um, with Diane Keaton's performance because of course she's playing a snobbish mutter who's, who's like a worry wart that's what she is and it's like she just can't handle the, her daughter's disability and that's understandable because you know people have trouble you know, having to cope with it, and that's what they were dealing with too in this film, that they were struggling. Until, well, she gets a new, until the other sister gets a new place. And she gets to have a new life, so she doesn't have to worry about this anymore. But, <laughs> she's so worried. But of course, the father is an alcoholic, but he's also very calm. Definitely was very nice to her, so... He's trying to help her out. So, things were going great. <clears throat> and I remember seeing this movie when I was in high school. It was the first time I ever saw this movie, and I really enjoyed it. You know, I love the soundtrack that they got. Surprisingly, this DVD has two music videos. One for Savage Garden, the Australian band, which I also love, because I do listen to Savage Garden. Uh, the song for this movie is called The Animal Song. <laughs> Which totally makes sense because if you listen to the lyrics, it definitely explains how the character really is. 
You know, like she wants to live careless and free. Like animals. Yeah. And it also has a music video by The Pretenders. It's a great song too. And it only has a trailer with um, French language track and you know, Adobe Digital 5.1 surround sound and, and of course widescreen and that aspect ratio of 2 by 35 which um, unfortunately was non-anamorphic yeah because uh, when I was playing the movie on my Blu-ray player yeah it didn't uh, stretch out uh, the black bars very well so it, you could definitely tell that's why this film definitely needs a Blu-ray release someday and I hope it does get one in the future because um, it really is overlooked and there's no featurette sadly I wish um, the cast and crew had talked about it especially Gary Marshall at the time but now that he's no longer with us he won't be able to but who knows maybe someday when they release this on Blu-ray I don't Maybe a Kino Lober might take a chance at it since they have a deal with Disney to release titles like this. Yeah, maybe they'll have interviews with Juliet Lewis, Gina Vada Vivisi, or yeah, maybe Diane Keaton might take a chance. I don't know. Um, the movie stars uh, Juliet Lewis, um, Diane Keaton, Tom Skerritt, Gina Vada Vivisi, Poppy McCumbry, Book Garrett, Kendra Crow. Sarah Paulson, Bryden McCloskey, Linda Forsen, Joe Flagerton, Tracy Reiner, and Hector Alexando. Yeah, it's written by Brock Bruner, Gary Marshall, which is also based on the story, too, along with Alexandra Rose and Blair Witchwood, and it's directed by Gary Marshall. The movie began somewhere in the San Francisco area. We meet a young, mentally disabled woman named Carla Tate, who's played by Juliette Lewis, who just received a well-earned certification from her boarding school that she attended to for years. She finally returns home to her rich family named the Tates, starting with her overprotective and snobbish, a worry ward, but very nervous wreck named Elizabeth, who's played by Diane Keaton, along with her calming dentist and recovering uh, alcoholic. Yeah, he had some alcoholic problems over the years, but doesn't deal with that anymore. Named Bradley, who's played by Tom Skerritt. Yeah, that's her father. Um, along with uh, her sisters, an older sister, Caroline, who's played by Poppy McCovery, and Heather, played by Sarah Paulson. So, so during the family discussion, Elizabeth adopts an uneasy attitude, which Carla was definitely having her ambition to seek more independence from her family by earning a diploma by attending to a polytechnic school. And that's when she meets uh, another mentally disabled person named Daniel McMahon, or simply Danny, who's played by Giovanni Vivisi. Yeah. So as soon as they met, they became friends. You know, they wound up going out together to, like, for example, a local uh, Greyhound um, place where they actually served some food, such as uh, tidbits and bits. So those are free food. Plus he gets a drink and just hang around. Meanwhile, they <laughs> they spotted a, a girl nicknamed Black Riddle. <laughs> no, not the character Black Riddle, but they just nicknamed her because she's very good at playing the uh, pool. So, yeah, we never get to see more of her, but that was the idea. Also, he loves to joke around a lot. He's very good at it. But not only that, but he also um, attends uh, at um, a marching band, and he works at a local bakery too. He even has his own apartments that he lives with his uh, landlord, a handyman, and his best friend named Ernie, who's played by Hector Alexando. It's a very nice place, too. 
Plus, his favorite film is The Graduates, you know, with Dustin Hoffman and um, and Bancroft. Yeah, that classic movie, uh, which kind of resides to that too, because there's even a very similar scene in this movie that kind of plays it by itself. So, kind of like that. Yeah, and I love that movie, The Graduate. I mean, it's a classic. So, yeah, and they they soon fell in love with each other. But that leads to um, bigger problems because, for one thing, Danny lives all alone in his apartment. So his father lives far away in Florida, and he's actually paying the rent for him. So he figured that you know Carla should actually live on her own too, have her own apartment in that area, and then be able to hang out uh, any time. So. Who knows? So even she wants to have her independence too, but of course, you know, seeing that uh, Elizabeth is very worried that maybe they'll f she'll find a way to actually add something to help her in case of emergencies. So that's why they set up a phone and and all these signs up um, in her apartment. So so once she's all alone, she gets to spend time, you know, just listen to music and. Just having some food and do whatever. So, so she's all alone, having her own privacy. Because um, we also begin to see uh, flashbacks at the beginning of the movie, too, where, yes, uh, when she was a little girl, she was actually having a fight with the family, you know, like mostly because of her communication. She just couldn't connect very well when, when she was having dinner, you know, trying to eat some peas, but not paying attention and then suddenly you know she goes completely nuts she goes up straight to the door and she starts slamming it as hard as she can just like that and then there's another flashback where where a lot of kids started making fun of her you know they put a sign on her back saying that she's stupid and then she actually pushes uh, the boy all the way down the stairs yeah she felt pretty bad about that and yes, she also has um, a maid too, yeah, because it's, it's a rich family, so of course they're going to have maids and everyone, because it's a big house, big mansion. So things are going pretty well, as it seems. I mean, because now um, they, you know, they they begin to spend time. You know, they start having you know holidays like Thanksgiving and Christmas and stuff. And of course, you know, they they were even practicing on on having sex. Yeah, that's why they read the book The Joy of Sex. <laughs> I, I kinda like that line too where How did sex came to be? And he actually says that I, I know she didn't really say that, but I'm just saying it in my own response. But at the end he says, I think it was Madonna. <laughs> Well, yeah, we all know that issue, too, because I mean, Madonna did have a sex book in the 90s. Uh, but So, of course, you know, they both fell in love with each other, and Danny suddenly gets drunk. Yeah, because, yeah, singing, if you're happy and you know it. <laughs> and, and he also got angry because of his father not be able to continue to pay all the rents. So that, that's when Ernie starts to explain all of his problems and everything, you know, just to do whatever he wants. So by the time uh, Christmas arrived, uh, the family went to a country club. Danny suddenly feels very nervous about his personal issues and everything, especially since he was trying to find a way to make it up for Carla, because after all, he just can't help it. I mean, he falls in love with her so much and he thought this would be a, a perfect speech. <laughs> Even though, you know, Caroline is ready to get married uh, with a handsome uh, fiancé. And yes, uh, they were being prepared for that. But then um, what happened was when when Danny started drinking so much and you know, having a couple of drinks, he decided to go up on stage, trying to explain about his love with Carla, and that's when he started to embarrass her 
right in front of everybody because they did it. Yeah, they actually did because you know, after Thanksgiving, you know, they were about to have sex. You know, they were actually stripping down to their underwear. And this is when he embarrassed her. She started screaming and yelling and just got mad at uh, Danny for what he did. And then they, just, they decided to, even though Danny didn't mean to, they decided not to see each other for a while. So now uh, Danny decided to go all the way back to Florida, you know, taking the train. You know, that way he'll be able to stay around for a while, because he was even planning on having Carla to join in, seeing if things will go so well. But, um, but then, yeah, he made a mistake, and he decided to go back, and just when the family was preparing for Caroline's wedding, well, he decided to go, <laughs> sort of in the take of The Graduate, just suddenly uh, <laughs> breaks in and just <laughs> slide all the way down in embarrassment but <laughs> but you know he made it and asked Carla to propose and hoping that they'll get married since, <laughs> since Carla was uh, one of the bridesmaids too and then they continued to go on with the wedding so they got married and <laughs> But that led to a fight between the Carla and Elizabeth, thinking that Danny's not going to take good care of her. But he even tells uh, Elizabeth straight that I can't play tennis. I'm not an artist, but I know how to love. So we can take care of each other. And you're not going to be invited to the wedding because of your attitude and everything. And that's what happened too, because you know, then Carla ran away. Just when the sprinklers were shooting up, I know uh, Elizabeth went down, yeah, with the golf cart and all that. So just um, as months gone by, or probably a month later, which was going to be preparing for Valentine's Day. And this is perfect timing here. Was that on Valentine's Day? Um, Carla and and Danny are going to red, so he's going to invite uh, half of the family to join in because it was pretty empty. So it's only just um, only several people attended, including the um, Radley, you know, Carla's father, and hoping that maybe who knows, you know, Elizabeth might join or may not, but in the end she did. Just as soon as both uh, Carla and and Danny finally are together, so they're now married, and by the end, you know, things were working out okay. And and towards the end of the film, we get to see uh, Danny's marching band showing up, just right when when both uh, Carla and Danny were in the convertible, you know, ready to have their honeymoon together. So. There you go. And in my opinion, I thought this was a wonderful, touching, romantic comedy and drama about mentally disabled people having their freedom and independence together the way uh, actual regular people do. So it just shows, you know, they can do whatever they want. You know, they get to fall in love, they get to have their own apartment, they get to do anything. As long as, you know, nothing bad happens to them. And it shows. Because I thought um, they had tremendous, uh, perf I thought they did a tremendous job. Uh, Gary Marshall, who wrote and directed this movie, as opposed to all the other writers. I mean, they did a fine job. I mean, it definitely put it all together. Um, had stellar performances including uh, Juliette Lewis and Gina Bonnie Bubisi, because I thought they played the characters exactly like real people. So you can tell they're not really actors playing them, but they really are real people you know, having to struggle. 
but I guess that's just the idea. Um, and also, uh, Tom Scarab was very good too, and so was uh, Diane Keaton, even though, yes, her character can go over the top, but that's just the whole point. And so was the other supporting cast joining in, including the Hector Alexando, uh, as well as Sarah Paulson and uh, Poppy McCovery, so they're all good. So they had some funny moments here and there, and had some dramatic moments going around. When you know Danny had found out that uh, he actually failed uh, one of the classes at Polytechnic School, that sadly uh, he was um, he felt very frustrated because by then you know his father's not going to be able to pay much of the rent because it's going to go higher. So then Carla suddenly cheers him up, telling him that if you take easier classes before you take the hard ones, you'll definitely do so well. And I love that moment. Um, there's even a funny moment when <laughs> when um, her sister suddenly uh, <laughs> flirts um, with a uh, computer teacher because, yes, uh, she was actually taking a computer class by actually uh, showing up her belly button and just trying to you know, put her <laughs> thumb in her in her jeans and thinking that maybe she'll probably end up showing her panties or something. <laughs> so I, I yeah, and then later she started to do a reaction to that <laughs> before um, her father uh, Radley came along and told what she was doing. <laughs> So he thought, man, that was embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. um, all in all, it, it really worked. It really captures the heart. Sad to say, the movie didn't do so well at the box office uh, through its $35 million budget. Yeah, you can definitely see that on the screen, but I feel like... I think the budget could have been a little smaller than, than $35 million, but I think it's because of the locations you know, the buildings and all that, that must have cost this much. And plus the actors and themselves and and the catering and all that. So it only made $27.8 million. So it became a box office bomb, sadly. It actually opened a number three behind films like Payback and 8mm. I think that was one of the biggest mistakes. Uh, but it did have a wonderful soundtrack. Yeah, including the Animal Song by Savage Garden. I really love that song. Um, actually, uh, was a surprising hit for, for the time, but unfortunately made up to um, 109 on the Billboard uh, 2000 album charts. So I'm happy to see that. Um, but sadly, I, I do wish. Um, the movie got a lot of credit it deserves. It really does. I mean, I, I think Gary Marshall, who not only co-wrote the script, along with all the other writers, and he directed it too, I thought he did a tremendous job. He definitely knows what he was doing. Definitely knows how to handle these situations. And I thought, I thought this was a good tribute to people who are mentally disabled. You know, even people who had Down syndrome or or any high functioning of autism as opposed to um, Asperger's. I mean, they can do everything, you know. It, it's hard on them than it is to everybody. And by the way, uh, just to keep this in mind, this was also my friend uh, Ian Rodriguez you know, from Inclusion Films. You know, he was a student that I, I met um, back in the early 2010s. <laughs> Uh, he really loves this movie too, so this was a great honor to review because why not? <laughs> I, I remember um, he wanted to um, have uh, writer and director Gary Marshall sign it, the DVD for him. Uh, I don't know if he had a chance, but I don't think he did. So but either way, you know, I love it. So anyway, that's um, The Other Sister, and I give the movie four and a half stars. 
I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.